Hello everyone, and welcome to Ultiori. We're gonna have an interesting adventure today. Dumb Movie Monday. Where the fun never stops and the farts never stink. Today, we're going to be looking at... You probably already know what type of movie this is gonna be. You see, the best thing I have to say is the animation for the intro of this movie is just A1. If the whole movie was like this, dude, this would have been amazing. Please, don't let me dissuade you though from joining in on this adventure because it's still worth your money. You need to be throwing money at these people seriously. This is an adventure you're never going to forget. The intro gives a little backstory in the llamas and where they came from, they're apparently aliens. They each get into these little barn-like things and fly off somewhere. This is a llama that we have going to our planet. Why? I don't know. They also hatch out of weird little furry eggs and they have special powers. It's like a gothic My Little Pony. I don't know why they all look like horse trailers, but it is what it is. They also sound like horses, which is weird. Of course, you have Spaceman walking on over here trying to fix stuff, and then the llama collides with him and he dies. His first victim, this llama. <laughs> Didn't they already do the intro? An old couple is farming. They take a break, ready to pack it in. Oh my god, do you see that? What? That. Credit to the llama. I can see why they wanted to make this movie because the llama, for some reason, always looks creepy and pissed. But you see, our beautiful little characters who don't know how to act, literally, have no idea that this is an alien llama. Also, this woman is supposed to be the grandparents of a much older woman, or sorry, the mother of a much older woman that we see later on. Like, they look like they're in the same age range, so I don't know what's going on here. I think they just cast people and they like to hell with it. At night, the couple settles down. They have no idea that the llama is stalking them and is in their home. But they find out real quick. They die, and their child, their daughter, and the grandkids have to come and sit the house. Dad didn't show. Why would he show? It wasn't his parents' funeral. What was he doing? <laughs> Daddy's being naughty. That's enough talk about your father. See what I'm talking about? This, this woman looks way older, but you know, whatever. The son looks like something's wrong with him. Either he's just really socially awkward or just really awkward. The mother just tells him to be good. And of course the sister's like, I'm gonna call all my friends. Yeah, it's Mel. Hey, Sheila. Hey, Trish. Sebastian. Amanda. Barney. You want to come to a party tonight? The llama, of course, is still stalking around. The culprit. Hey, Ted. Hey, Emily. Are you free? Who cares if your dad died? Come to my party. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Zeus. Hey, Cassie. Hey, hey. This goes on for quite a while, I promise you. So the sister invites all her friends, and they're the weirdest group of people I have ever seen. I'm not all about parties, but I can promise you that this party scene is the best thing that happens in this entire movie. Some weird shit goes down here. Most of the footage for this movie are in these scenes for the party. Drop your drawers. There's no way those are the house rules. Jordan Peele over here tries to be the life of the party. By the way, I feel bad for this person because she's like obviously trying to hook up with the sister the entire night. And she's usually on her own, but then she nabs someone. But right before she nabs someone, her dirty sponge gets covered in vinegar. How are we doing on Operation Get Him Late? Uh, yeah, I'm working on it, but that isn't helping. Go lax. As in laxative? I think it's nice that she's trying to get her brother hooked up with someone since he's never had that. And she asked the guy to make sure that it's not someone who's been around the road so many times. But he says, I have the perfect person, the cherry picker. She picks their cherries uh, and breaks them in. And it's all cute and wholesome until they just start breaking into song or actually breaking into dance in the middle of when they're speaking. And then just, just some weird, uh, like, I don't even know how to tell you how this movie's going because I have no idea myself. Okay, so that goes on for like a good few minutes. Now they're playing a game and this guy gets his feelings hurt because apparently he just found out that his pretty girlfriend had been sleeping around with the other guy that they're losing the game to. I don't even know what he's talking about. Rip. I feel so bad for the guy, but considering who he chose, She's all proud about it, too. She doesn't even care about his feelings. But while all that's going on, everyone is getting more plastered. The brother is trying to get these people to respect his grandmother's house. And also, because they're planning on selling the house, he doesn't want it too messed up. Now, to be fair, they're just sitting here, but he is policing the hell out of everyone. What is that smell? What are you talking about, man? 
It smells like skunk. It smells kind of like dad's lady friends. But don't worry, it'll be a happy ending for him. <laughs> Literally. They're bringing more people to the party. Party looks lame to me. I mean, the only party that I think is a good party is if we're having a tournament of Super Smash Brothers. Anyway, she calls her friend or texts her friend to ask if she's coming. This is important because this is where we'll meet the alien once again. This part I just don't get though. The girl is texting while she's driving, but she's looking up at this, like at what we're looking at, you know, the text that we're seeing. This girl's texting and she's looking up. Okay. At first I was confused because I'm like, is it just me? Like, am I not processing what's going on here? But no, no, they're texting and they're just staring at... <laughs> okay. Unfortunately for Sarah, she is not going to make it to the party. <laughs> Poor thing. You should have just gone around the llama. Meanwhile, the guy comes back and he's like, no, you know what? I'm going to get to the bottom of this. He texts you a couple times. I mean, I don't know. He's probably just checking to see how I'm doing. Your ex-boyfriend is not supposed to text you, period. It's not like it meant anything. Yeah, this shit needs to stop. Okay? Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Ugh. I'm trying so hard. This is a great movie. I, uh... Hi, uh... Oh! This guy goes out to pee and he gets first look at the llama. Now this shit is scary as hell. If I was out here and I didn't know that there was something else on the other side of the fence and then I see this thing with this long ass neck and head with glowing red eyes like Superman PMSing, I would lose my shit too. He runs back inside and tries to tell everyone what he saw, but of course nobody believes him. After all, they've all been just... <sighs> You know, so they're probably not the best judges of what they've seen with their own eyes. The boyfriend goes out to take his own little smoke. He's hurting over what his girlfriend did. And I honestly feel really bad for this guy. But he didn't get the news that there was a killer llama out here. Wilderbeast before. <laughs> hey, buddy. Want a hit? Of course, the llama takes a hit. But then it rips his fingers off. Of course, when his girlfriend goes outside to check on him, she finds him being attacked by a weird creature. A creature that just threw his still beating heart into her. Her boyfriend's dead, and she's freaking terrified. And I don't know why she's sitting here holding the heart. Like, why, what are you doing? What? Throw it away and run. Go get help. Oh, I just don't get these people sometimes. It's horror movies. They have to die. It's like, they're so stupid that you wish for them to die. You don't feel as bad when it happens because you basically justify it happening and say, yeah, they kind of did that to themselves. They had it coming. The llama hits her to the ground and then... <laughs> oh my God. I'm trying, I'm trying so hard to hold on. I'm going to skip through a whole bunch of this because you guys have to look at this adventure for yourself. Trust me. But this is the worst beating I have ever seen. In a monster movie? The llama is, 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 is beating her up. Like, it's... <laughs> She's still breathing. What are with those freaking legs? Like, what? I honestly don't know what to comment here. Meanwhile, the awkward brother is trying to get into the game. And Jordan Peele guy is trying to get him drunk so that he can relax a little. While all this is happening, the sister's boyfriend gets to the house. He slips on the heart that just came out of the guy that was killed by the llama. But he had no idea what it was in the first place. Also, I guess the dead bodies are nowhere to be found. So he has no idea that there's a llama alien stalking the house and the people inside. So, Mel, tell me about your new boyfriend. Well, his name is Trent and... Hey, babe, my Trent, two. how are you? Why does she look so mad? <laughs> if you like the person, maybe you should just tell the person. Jordan Peel guy comes up and introduces himself. And he's like, oh, hey, it's you, my friend's boyfriend. I think there was something going on between her and Jordan Peel, but I'm not really sure. But then this weird, <laughs> this weird, awkward exchange happens. And it makes me so uncomfortable. It's like, Okay, I know they made this movie like this on purpose. It's so freaking obvious, but it's just so cringe and so uncomfortable. 
I just want it to be over. I don't know why this is even in the movie in the first place. I'm Trent, Mel's boyfriend. It's a pretty nice script you got there. Yes, yes it is. So is yours. <laughs> Creature in existence! <laughs> Measure your dicks. Some other time then. <sighs> okay. So, Jordan Peele guy is like, there's a hot tub. I just found out from your brother. We should take the party there. Meanwhile, sister and Trent get a room, so they will not be joining the hot tub. This is where the brother pops his cherry. <laughs> okay, stop. Holy shit, dude. Gross. You nasty. This makes me so goddamn uncomfortable. Anyway, they're all at the hot tub and they're having fun. Jordan Peele's like, hold on, I'm gonna get the beer for you guys. We're gonna enjoy this party by being in the hot tub. But something is afoot. The llama enters the garage and sees everyone in the hot tub. At least I think they're in the freaking hot tub in the garage because that's, that's kind of the implication. But it sees them and goes after them for its next kill. <laughs> yes. They all find out that the llama's there and it kicks the radio in because they're like, I guess... It wants them to be electrocuted. I don't know why it kicked it so freaking far. You could have easily have killed them if you had just kicked it in without launching it at the other guy. But it doesn't matter because something happens and for some reason they get electrocuted anyway. They're all electrocuted and it lasts a very long time. I don't know why it looks so funny, but it does. The llama leaves just in time. And then these girls get she she nabbed her one. Come in and see the other guys. Just lying there, but you also see an arc of electricity going back forth. I mean, I actually don't even know if you see an arc of electricity or they play that up for dramatic effect in the movies. I mean, what does water actually look like when it's getting electrocuted? So I couldn't find anything where you actually see electric arcs through water. But still, dude, if you see everyone jigging around in there, aren't you going to wonder? Uh, the fact that these girls aren't even concerned with what's going on in the pool is a test to how ridiculous these people act on a regular basis. Of course, they go in, even though these guys are sprawling, and they're just like, eh, well, forget it. Put our feet in, and let's die together. Jordan Peele discount person tells them that everyone's dead in the hot tub. Yeah, I'm a man now. Okay. Now that he is a man, he acts like a total jerk. I don't really think he's acting like a jerk. He's just acting very logical and tells everyone that they should go outside where there's a signal to call the cops. No one ever thinks to check if there's a landline until like way later. Nobody has any signal and they're stranded in this farm area. They have no idea who killed those people. I'm on the app, okay? Okay. That literally made me... That scared me just a tiny bit. Jump scared just a tiny bit. But you see, Jordan Peele had the right idea. And this girl is like, look behind you. <laughs> Ew, why are they screaming like they have cotton stuck in their throat? Jesus Christ, dude. This was really hard for me to watch. It's so dumb. Oh. Thank you for suggesting this, by the way. <laughs> I love how her blood is so directional. That happens throughout this entire movie. The blood is very directional. When somebody blasts into smithereens, there is a stream of blood from like 30 feet away that is very close to you and uber directional. Not splatter, just a stream. Everyone gets doused in this directional blood. This guy almost gets away, but the llama gets him too. Also, he blows up and his blood is directional as well. For some reason, Jordan Peele doesn't get hit at all. They were all just smothered in blood, yet they're kind of dry when they go inside the house. Also, the ex-boyfriend guy, yeah, he got a mouthful of llama vomit, and now he's starting to transform into a llama as well. I don't know exactly what happens when he transforms into a llama. Like, is he actually going to transform into a full llama and start hunting down his friends? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the leg, your white leg, it's tied up. We can see the ropes. They're holding it together. Uh, 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 uh. That's not fur. 
This freaking Brillo pad, or whatever the hell that thing is. Oh, this is the second time I'm watching this. This is difficult. Now the adventure gets exciting, and the group flees the home so they can get to safety. They have no idea what this thing is or what it wants, but that's not their concern right now. All they need to worry about doing is surviving. Unfortunately, some people were asked out when all of this was happening, and they're just waking up like this girl. She has no idea that there's a Kilolomer on the loose, but she quickly finds out, much to her dismay, as soon as she walks out the door. sister call their father who was still fooling around from like daytime to evening time to see if he can help the llama fells trees the llama is tearing these guys up meanwhile old boy here is turning into a llama himself and the group agrees that he shouldn't come anywhere near them he should stay with a llama because he's turning into one to tell the truth i wouldn't trust him either i also like how sometimes the red eyes don't exactly match up with what they're supposed to put it on like his eyes are closed here yet the red glow is still on his face he starts transforming even more into the llama and is so scared with what's happening. Now, what you're about to see is like the coolest thing ever. I don't know who did the animations on this thing, but this should have been the entire movie. This was freaking awesome. I want to follow this person or these people who worked on the animation for this segment and for the intro of Llamageddon because this looks badass. <laughs> Seriously was more engaged watching this than the entire movie. Somehow the art style of the animation here matches the music. It matches everything so much better. Is it a horse? No. Is it an emu? No. What are you doing? <laughs> Brother and sister and the Jordan Peele guy run to the spaceship they find out in the open field. Despite it looking just like a horse trailer with wings on the side, they immediately go to the conclusion that it's a spaceship. Jordan Peele is dead. He sacrifices his life so the others can get away. The dad comes along and tries to help. I don't know how he knew where his kids were, but he does, and I don't know why he's feeling up this thing's body juices. And of course, he does the old trope where he tastes it, having no idea what the hell it is. Meanwhile, this guy is giving birth. Or, or laying eggs. What the hell? When the father finds this guy, he tells him to kill him and put him out of his misery, and the father obliges very quickly. The cute little llama aliens start hatching out of the egg. They're actually plush toys, by the way. I mean, I thought they were going to get even more creative with it, but they're literal plush toys. And he pops them to smithereens. Boom! Boom, and the shots all sound different. Then he meets the llama, the big daddy. Unfortunately, the llama takes a chunk from out of his neck, so he doesn't make it. The kids don't even know that their father's there. And as the llama confronts them, for what may be the last time ever, about to lose their lives, the father saves the day. He runs that big old thresher thing right into the llama. He dies and tells his kids to tell their mom that, you know, some curse words. And he says to the daughter that she's his favorite. And then, you know, he's no more. Then it ends and there's this badass rap song playing at the end. And I honestly thought when it started playing that I was listening to an offshoot of Slim Shady. I repeat, will the real Slim Shady Ladies please stand up? See, it's, it's basically the same thing. But it's kind of cool. It sounds nice. I'm not going to lie. Okay, so this movie was, you know, this movie was something. <laughs> That's all I got to say. It was something. And uh, thank you for suggesting that. I was having a little bit of trouble finishing it because it was giving me an aneurysm. And I had to slow it down and watch it in three segments. And then I kind of had to watch it a second time to leave this review. It was a masterpiece. <laughs> what did you guys think about this adventure? Would you go on this adventure again? Will you buy the adventure and own it for yourself so that you know what to do if a llama apocalypse or a llama geddon ever comes to a world near you? Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ultiori. You ask, we answer. I am freaking tired. I'm going to go lie down now.